Over 4 million years ago, the Earth was experiencing the first days of the Pliocene Epoch. During this time, the world had begun to undergo a change in temperature and aridity, which created many changes throughout the globe. And on the plains of Africa, a new creature was abound in this strange, changing new world. It was shockingly somewhat human in appearance, yet much smaller in stature and unassuming. Although, in more ways than one, it was actually an extremely important animal, and for us, perhaps the most important. And of course, it had no knowledge that one day its legacy would play a large role in our understanding of ourselves. This was the Australopithecus. The first time scientists ever became aware of this predecessor of ours was in 1924, when the skull of an infant was found within a South African lime quarry. The specimen, now referred to as the Tong child, was estimated to have been between 3 and 4 years old when it died some 2.8 million years ago. It was rapidly recognized by anthropologist Raymond Dart as being a new kind of animal and primate, one that he believed may even be an early human ancestor due to multiple humanoid features it possessed, and he quickly named it Australopithecus africanus, meaning the southern ape of Africa. Soon after, even more specimens belonging to this new creature were found. But these new remains, along with the Tong child, were met with a lot of backlash from the scientific community, as many in those days were against the idea of the Australopithecus being anything but an ape. Eventually though, through more complete remains and increased studies into the Australopithecus, it was agreed upon that it wasn't just an ape, but an early hominin that may have descended from Artipithecus ramidus and shared several traits with both apes and modern humans. Yet these differences, notably when it came to anatomy, were big enough for it not to be considered a species of Homo, rather a separate genus. Although, interestingly enough, some Australopithecus were more human than others. This stems from there being numerous species of Australopithecus, some of which, like the Gari, had more human-like features than others like the Anamensis. However, at one point in time, the idea that it was indeed a new species of Homo was in fact considered. This debate stemmed from a monumental discovery made in Tanzania back in 1935 that consisted of two trails of footprints. These trails were confirmed as being made by Australopithecus, thanks to foot reconstructions and showed that this primate was bipedal in life. And because the Australopithecus was fully bipedal, certain anthropologists argued that it must be a species of Homo. As to them, fully-fledged bipedalism is a hallmark of humanness, and therefore, all fully bipedal apes should be classified as such. However, the exclusion of Australopithecus from the Homo genus remains the prevalent stance mainly due to the anatomical differences between the two, with one of the more important ones being brain size. Skull scans showed that the brains of most Australopithecus species were about 65% smaller than those of modern humans, with some slight variance as early Australopithecus had smaller brains than later ones. This smaller brain size, coupled with its clear bipedalism, was actually a major deal to scientists as for a long time, there had been a major school of thought which assumed that the development of large brains had to happen before bipedalism. And thus, the Australopithecus's ability to walk upright despite having a smaller brain absolutely uprooted this conjecture. And not only did it stump many with its small brain and walking capabilities, but also with its timing. As the Tanzanian trackways remain the oldest evidence of clear fundamental bipedalism in hominids, being dated to 3.7 million years ago. Furthermore, since the oldest species, the Anamensis, is roughly 4.2 million years old, it means that these were the first hominids to become fully, fundamentally bipedal. This being said, there is evidence of other older hominids also walking upright as shown by the 7 million year old Sahelanthropus and the 5.7 million year old Artipithecus. Yet research on both of these primates indicate that their legs, hands, and spines were designed for only short amounts of bipedalism, with the vast majority of their days being spent in the trees. And this brings up another monumental achievement 
of the Australopithecus, as it being primarily bipedal indicates that it was an adept terrestrial animal, making it the first known great ape and ancestral human to live on the ground. This shift from being arboreal to terrestrial was a major change, and the Australopithecus developed several traits that helped it adjust. One of these changes, evidenced by the famous specimen Lucy, was its legs, which became longer, stronger, and more human-like, being almost identical in function to our own. Meanwhile, its feet underwent changes too, also becoming more similar to the feet of humans, with the opposable toe seen in other great apes disappearing in adults. Additionally, the pelvis became broader and shorter to accommodate internal organs in an upright position, and it gained a curved spine, which aided in weight distribution by offsetting the weight of gravity. These new traits and features helped answer the question of how the Australopithecus adjusted to walking around. But it didn't answer the question of why it left the safety of trees in the first place. This is a mystery that remains unanswered, but certain ideas have been presented. The leading one being that a change in climate provoked them to descend from trees. During the time of the Australopithecus, Africa saw increased cooling and more defined seasons, which resulted in the once expansive forests and woodlands being replaced by grasslands and savannas. These open habitats, which lacked trees, meant that living on the ground gave Australopithecus access to more resources and the ability to traverse larger amounts of terrain. However, despite these adaptations, the Australopithecus quickly found out that living on the ground was by no means easy, and often led to short, unfortunate lives, with the average lifespan being estimated at less than 20 years old. One reason why life was extremely harsh for these primates was their fragile build and small sizes, with adults measuring no more than 1.4 meters or 4 foot 7 inches in height with females sometimes being 50% smaller than males. This small stature, along with having no strong physical defenses, led to easy predation by a wide range of predators that it lived alongside, which included hyenas, African wild dogs, panthera, cheetahs, megantarian, dinophelis, homotherium, mac iridis, crocodiles, and predatory birds. Some of these carnivores are even known to have preyed on our ancestors through direct evidence, with one case coming from the Tong child itself, who possessed a damaged skull and eye sockets, both of which had been gouged and scratched by the talons of a large eagle. Crocodiles and big cats have also shown evidence of regularly hunting Australopithecus through bite marks and bone assemblages respectively. Clearly, life was very dangerous back then. However, the Australopithecus still managed to get by, and one way they did so was actually through trees. Because despite being terrestrial, the Australopithecus were still adept climbers, thanks to their curved hands and mobile toes, which let them climb trees when predators were nearby. Infants in particular seem to have utilized this defensive strategy, as recovered feet bones from a specimen dubbed Lucy's Baby showed that juveniles retained opposable toes that allowed them to easily scale trees for some time, until they would lose this ability as they aged and matured, making them more vulnerable in some ways. Yet, the Australopithecus were by no means pushovers as adults, and were still highly successful despite their hurdles. And one way they achieved this success was through their unique dentition, that allowed them to eat a diverse range of food. Specifically, they had thickened enamels and expanded molars which allowed them to consume floor-bound foods such as nuts, tubers, and tough grains that were peppered with gritty dirt and other small particles, which would erode the teeth of most other animals. Additionally, they possessed enlarged incisors, which were specialized for scavenging meat and would have been used to remove flesh off a carcass in a tearing fashion. Although most studies indicate a predominantly herbivorous diet which along with ground-bound food included fruits, vegetables, and cereal grains. On top of it having highly specialized teeth, the Australopithecus had another, much more rare trait to help it. One that it actually had to create, so to speak. This was technology. In 2011, a site named Lomekwi was discovered in Kenya 
where over 150 artifacts consisting of stone cores, flakes, and anvils were located. These artifacts are currently the oldest known stone tools, being dated to 3.3 million years ago, and most believe that Australopithecus were responsible for the creation of them. However, it may have been the Kenyan Thropus instead who was responsible. Either way, other strong evidence exists that indicate Australopithecus habitually created stone tools, demonstrated by one site in Ethiopia where multiple Australopithecus afarensis specimens were found next to various large mammal bones that had clear signs of being processed and cut with stone tools. This showed these hominids likely used their tools to butcher animals, allowing them to easily get meat and bone marrow within bones. Such an advantage would have greatly helped the Australopithecus survive, succeed, and spread throughout the lands, which it did end up doing, with all species encompassing large portions of Western and Southern Africa, as well as some parts of Central and Northern Africa. Additionally, the success that its technology along with its bipedalism and other traits allowed for is reflected by its impressive time range, as it is one of the longest surviving hominids existing for over 2.3 million years. With such a long existence, the Australopithecus lived alongside numerous animals, which along with the previously mentioned predators included the black-footed cat, cape fox, mongooses, gannet, horses, pigs, clipspringer, antelope, hares, impalas, elephants, giraffes, forest-dwelling monkeys, rhinoceros, civetherium, hippos, turtles, tortoises, birds, and snakes, among others. In some cases, it even lived with other Australopithecus, as certain species are known to have coexisted, such as the Afarensis and Anamensis, who lived side by side for at least 100,000 years. Separately, there is evidence which also suggests it lived with two other hominids, Paranthropus and the earliest known Homo erectus, as all three lived in the same place at the same time, though interactions amongst them are not known. Unfortunately, the aid of technology and bipedalism would not help the Australopithecus last, with the youngest known species, Australopithecus sediba, becoming pseudo-extinct some 1.98 million years ago during the early Pleistocene, meaning all its members went extinct, but some members of a daughter species survived. Many conversations, debates, and arguments regarding the cause of its disappearance have arisen during the years, ranging from interbreeding to climate change and competition with other hominins. But for now, a clear answer does not exist. On top of this, there is also great interest regarding if the Australopithecus is our direct ancestor. Many think this is extremely likely, and for a long time, it was thought that the Afarensis species was who we descended from. But now this is a hotly argued topic, with some suggesting we came from another Australopithecus species, while others think it was an Australopith ancestor. For now, this remains another question for another day. But it's clear that whatever the answer is, the Australopithecus was still an essential part of our own story. However, this is just one piece of the puzzle in the complex tapestry of human evolution. But with that being said, we will be taking a look at some of these other pieces shortly. So if you found this video interesting, hit that subscribe button so you can watch our next video about our mysterious ancestors. And like always, thank you for watching, and until next time, on Extinct Zoo.